So Halo Infinite is now out and I decided that I wanted to put that game up against the Ryzen 5700G using the integrated graphics on this APU and let's just say it didn't go quite to plan. So the original idea was really simple. I wanted to show Halo Infinite and how it performs with the 5700G to tell you just what kind of settings you can get away with with the 5700G when playing Halo Infinite. I did not expect awesome, amazing graphics with extremely high frame rates, but I was hoping I could get to the point of it being at least playable. Now the test setup was really simple for this one. It was a 5700G running stock across the board, both on the CPU and the GPU. The RAM was 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory running at 3200 megahertz. It was a fairly basic setup for a 5700G. It wasn't being given extremely high end RAM, but at the same time, it wasn't the lowest end RAM either. So I felt like that was gonna be at least fairly representative of a lot of people's setups with these uh, APUs. Though obviously, the faster the memory, the better with these APUs. So if you wanna spend just a little bit more to get like 3600 megahertz RAM with APUs, that's not a bad idea. And this brings me to my first hang up in my testing, which was the Windows Store itself and the Microsoft gaming services and how badly implemented these things are. This is a little bit of a mini rant here, but I had installed Halo Infinite and it had actually been in the game a little bit playing with settings but I wanted to restart the PC to make sure there wasn't anything waiting for the game to be exited out of no updates were waiting on Windows or anything but when I logged back into Windows every time I clicked play on Halo Infinite it just kicked me over to the Windows Store and the Microsoft Gaming Services but gave me no options and no error codes if this happens to you by the way the easiest thing to do is to just like go back to the game and uh, select something different to be installed or potentially just to verify the install some way. For me, it was to deselect the high textures as an installed component of Halo Infinite with the 5700G. And then I assume it made sure everything else was on the up and up and, and it started working again. But the point is Microsoft Store is, it's bad. It's great for Game Pass. Like Game Pass as a service is excellent, but it forces you into the Microsoft Store and that's just awful. With all that being said, I loaded the game up in low settings across the board at 1080p, but with the render scaling set to 71%, and that was only because that is as low as the render scaling would allow it to go, uh, at least with my monitor and my setup, which the base resolution for the capture card I'm using was 1080p, so the base canvas was 1080p. 71% render scale gave me 1363 by 767, and the frame rate was getting close to 30 FPS, which I guess is playable, though if you're gonna be playing multiplayer, that's really not gonna keep you competitive. Uh, but if you just wanted to play through the campaign, 30 FPS probably would be good enough for you to at least somewhat enjoy your time, but then the game completely crashed. And I do mean it crashed, like the whole game was just completely hung up. I had to go to a task manager to force quit the game. It, it was not good and it was only a couple of minutes into the gameplay. But okay, okay, so we have issues here. We have a game that crashes and an APU that's not quite able, even on the lowest settings with the lowest render scale to get me to a truly playable frame rate. But I do have one more ace in the hole and that is overclocking because I know for a fact my 5700G has a little bit of headroom on the GPU. Uh, it runs it at 2000 megahertz out of the box, but I've had this thing up to like 23, 2400 megahertz before. So I went ahead and put an overclock on the GPU side of the 5700G, hoping that would be just enough to move the arrow a little bit over into the playable category of 30 FPS plus. Uh, no. In fact, for the brief moment the game was actually running, it seemed like I was seeing virtually no difference at all in the frame rate, and then the game didn't really crash, but one FPS may as well be a crash. So here's where that leaves us. Get yourself a dedicated GPU. If you're wanting to use the 5700G 
to play Halo Infinite, get yourself a dedicated GPU. Now, the good news is Halo Infinite is not an overly demanding game on the GPU side of things. It requires a GTX 1050 Ti or an RX 570 at the low end. Uh, you could get away with something like an RX 470, I'm sure, because the 470 and 570 have very similar performance. And on the NVIDIA side, you could probably drop down to something like a GTX 960 if you really had to, but more preferably, maybe a GTX 970 might be a decent option. Or even going further back, you might be able to get away with something like a GTX 770 or a 780 of some kind. But the point is, there are GPU options out there that are not insanely expensive right now if this is the game that you're wanting to play and you've not been able to find an xbox at all but you may already have a uh, pc laying around then picking up a graphics card that has low power demands may not be a terrible option for you and to be clear for the 5700g i actually still love this apu it has eight cores 16 threads on amd's newest architecture it's a fantastic apu and does a great job getting you up and running in some games you just have to know the limitations and obviously Halo Infinite is just a little too demanding for these Ryzen 5000 APUs. So if you're looking to play those games, you can definitely do them on a 5700G. You just have to have a dedicated graphics card. So that's my experience with trying to play Halo Infinite on the 5700G. Of course, your results may vary for you. Maybe you did get an overclock on your 5700G and it was just enough to put you over the top of playability. And if that's you, let us know in those comments down below because uh, obviously this is a sample size of one. I'm also making this video very shortly after the launch of Halo Infinite. So hopefully drivers get better. Hopefully the game becomes more and more optimized to the point where maybe down the road with AMD's fine wine technology, the 5700G can maybe pull off playability, but that's just for the future for now. So comments down below. Otherwise, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos for my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.